please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Dave Williams, editor here with today's video. Suspension adjusters, where are they and what do they do? Now some bikes are what we call fully adjustable. They are adjustable for preload, rebound damping, and compression damping on both the forks and the shock. Some bikes have no adjustability. Bikes like the uh, Ninja 400, they have no adjustment in the forks whatsoever and they only have preload adjustment on the shock. Nothing else is adjustable on the shock. Come on, there we go. So you have to look at your bike and see what you have. But in this video, Dave will go over what all the adjusters are, where they are, and what they do. So what does an adjuster do? So let's start at the top of the forks because those are the easiest to see. Usually something that's got a nut on it will be a preload adjuster, which means tension. So going clockwise will make this disappear in or going clockwise will add tension to the spring and it'll shorten it. The screw inside can be rebound or compression, it depends. So in this case with the S1000RR and this generation, rebound is yellow and it's yellow on both sides. On a later generation, it's yellow this side and it's red this side for compression. So we know color coding, we have two preload adjusters and we have two adjusters inside the nut and in this case because they're both yellow they're both rebound so for preload we want to count all the way out first so this has zero preload yep you can also count the number of lines showing here which tells you where you are or you can count the number of turns so here you see Dave adding some preload and here you see Dave removing some preload from the forks. Now, preload adds tension to the spring. You'll hear Dave use uh, colloquial terms like stiffen the spring, stiffen the spring, or soften the spring. Now, I have to explain this, otherwise the engineering crowd will jump in the comments and start peeing all over the place. Technically, Dave isn't stiffening the spring or softening the spring. You change the spring rate to do that. And a higher spring rate is a stiffer spring and a lower spring, spring rate is a softer spring. It takes less energy to make it move if it's softer, more energy to make it move if it's stiffer. When Dave is adding preload or removing preload to either the forks or the shock, he's changing the amount of tension, that's why you, use, you hear him use the word tension. So when you take a spring and you push on it, you put tension into it or you could pull on it from its natural state, you could pull on it, and that would also add tension. So like a rubber band, you can only add tension by stretching it. You can't add tension by compressing it. But a spring, you can add tension by compressing it. So that's what's happening with the preload. But colloquially, you'll hear Dave say, soften the spring or stiffen the spring. And of course, preload is the adjuster to set your sag how much the bike drops or sags under its own weight, and then additionally, how much more it sags when you sit on it. The preload adjusters are how you adjust sag and try and get it into the proper range. Next is our rebound adjuster, and you can see here one through 10. We're using the S1000RR as an example here because it was the bike available at the moment. No other bikes have those numbers. Everything else looks like this GSXR here that Dave is adjusting. So we need to see where we are. So we're gonna go clockwise. So one, two, three, three. So one, two, three. Now go to the other side and make sure that you are three clicks from closed. One, two, three, four, five, six, Oops, so these are totally mismatched. So now we need to bring it back. One, two, three. And it's not uncommon for these adjusters to get out of alignment or become offset. All they're held in, these are held in by a spring and a ball as a detent, so it locks it in position. But sometimes all they have is an O-ring and sometimes that O-ring wears out and so the compressed, the rebound adjuster will move. Some adjusters make clicking sounds. They have little detents and they click. Some do not, and you measure them by turns. And then some you have to count by hex nut faces. 
There's an entire video about that, and the link is in the description below. So at the base of the forks, you can also have an adjuster down here, and this is always compression, so we're gonna do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. So we're five of 10. So one, two, three, four, five. Now we need to check on the other side is five. It was off on this leg, so let's check it. One, two, so this is two. So one, two, three, four, five. Some bikes have both high speed and low speed compression. If your bike does, then the standard compression adjuster with either the flathead screw or the Allen wrench will be inside of a hex nut on the fork, the bottom of the fork usually, or the top of the shock. So the flathead is low speed, mm -hmm. the big, big 14 millimeter nut is high speed. Potholes, cracks, sharp edges, expansion joints, all that stuff. So now compression is five out. Rebound is three out. Preload is all the way out. So on any big piston fork that you find on any of the modern bikes, you've got tension, which is rebound. You've got compression, which is compression. And the screws are in the cap for damping. Now they may be in this leg, they may be in that leg, and this has a spring or whatever. But the damping control is here. The preload is at the bottom because the spring sits down here. So when you go clockwise in this direction, you make it stiffer, and when you go clockwise, counterclockwise, you make it softer. And that adjuster here turns the spring up and shortens it, or brings it back down and softens it. So your spring is actually way down in here. And that's the purpose of the preload adjuster being at the bottom. And then the last thing you want to check is fork position. Now on this fork, they're engraved lines. So we are at line number one, two, and three, which is correct for the stock setting for the geometry for this generation. If you don't have lines in your forks, the way you determine your fork position is with a set of calipers, and you measure the distance from the triple clamp to the top of the fork in millimeters. And then for the shock, we have an aftermarket shock in this case, which is a nitron. So our adjusters, are set separately. So this is the reservoir and that black dial is compression. So to see where we are we've got to go all the way clockwise. So you won't be able to see because my hand's got to go in to get some kind of grip on it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So that shock is set on compression, it's seven clicks out, so we'll put it back. On the outside is the preload adjuster here, which makes it really nice because it's remote. So right now we have zero on the preload adjuster. Remember on, pre on tension we want to come all the way out and count out first, so there is zero here. There are all manner of preload adjusters on shocks, and there's a video about the various kinds and various ways to adjust preload in another video, and the link is below. Forks have preload adjusters in one of three places. On the top of the fork like you saw, 10, on the bottom 12, of the fork 14, like you saw. 18, 20, two, four, five. And then on some cowies, the preload adjuster is in one of the fork caps, and the damping is in the other fork cap. You heard Dave talk about that whether it was in, the damping was in one or both forks. So the last thing we've got is the rebound adjuster, which is on the base of the shock. Now, that's buried all the way up inside of here. So we are gonna count counterclockwise, screwing the bolt into the hole. So as we go counterclockwise, we're tightening the adjuster. Flip yourself on the floor and put your head here looking up. Counterclockwise turns to clockwise. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven clicks. One, two, three, 
five, six, seven. So the shock is set at seven clicks out. So when you're doing spring tension, always count out and count the number of turns. Sometimes you'll have clicks. See what you have first. Then when you're doing damping, count all the way clockwise in turns or clicks, depends what you have, so figure it out. The one that everybody gets wrong is the bottom of the shock. Because you are looking down on it, you have to go counterclockwise and count. Or alternatively, you lay on the floor and look up at it, and that turns into clockwise. Now on this style of traditional shock, the rebound adjuster is actually a flathead screw. And sometimes it can be a three millimeter Allen. So depending what you have, you'll see one of these two things rather than a dial. All right, so in terms of hydraulics, the screw manages flow. It does it by, if you go counterclockwise, it opens the hole up, more oil flows. If you go to the right, it locks that hole down and less flow for more control. So hydraulics are therefore nothing more than a tap. If you want lots of plushness, lots of movement, that movement comes from the tap being open. So at this point, Let's open the tap on rebound all the way and watch what the fork does in its action. So that bounces a lot because there's no control over the fluid whatsoever. So let's go in three clicks and close that hole down, literally three clicks. Now that may be absolutely worthless or it may be a massive change, so we need to test and see. Little better, but not a whole lot. So let's go three more. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, those extra three clicks closed rebound enough so it goes down, up, and stops. The other thing to realize is that we have a compression adjuster, and that compression adjuster is here. You open that up, you're going to get a lot of stroke here, a lot. You shut it down and you're only going to get half the stroke. So the goal with the compression adjuster is it's all about bump absorption. Start with it open, then go in three, then go in three more and see what it does here for the amount of travel. So if you put a zip tie on it or a cable tie, then it will push down to the lowest point and you can see how much travel you're using. So compression is all about bump absorption, but again, like all hydraulics, it's just a tap. Try different positions, but compression is all about how much travel you can get out of it. So if you go tight, you won't get a lot. If you go open, you might get a lot. So you've got to test and see. Now, as far as the shot goes, it's no different, but everything's hidden in here, right? We can't see it move, we can't see the spring move, we can't see what's happening because when we push on the bike, we just see the exhaust and the swing arm move and that's it. So because we can't see it, it doesn't mean that when we do the adjustment, it won't change. Visually, it's extremely hard to see on the shock. So you always start with the fork because at that point, it's a piece of cake to actually see what's going on. And in doing that, then you can transfer that over to the shock and getting the shock to work the same as the front gives us this. As soon as we get that, the bike's wonderful. It's so easy to ride because it's planted, it's on rails, it's balanced, it feels lit even. All kinds of phrases can be used for it. Understand your adjusters, understand how to use them, understand what they do, and get to work, but change one adjuster at a time so you can build a vocabulary up by feeling what it does to the motorcycle. So let's recap. Preload adjusts so that you can set your sag. Rebound adjusters allow you to determine how fast the bike is gonna rebound, either the fork or the shock, after it's compressed. Compression adjusters allow to you, you to adjust how the bike is going to compress, either under braking for the forks, acceleration for the shock, or just bumps, bump absorption, as Dave said. And then, of course, counting the adjustments. 
With preload, you start all the way out and count in. So if your preload is four turns, then it's four turns in from all the way out. With damping, it's the opposite. You count from all the way in, out. Hence the name of our series, Two Clicks Out. So you start from all the way closed, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, and you count out. With the S1000RR, it was three clicks out from all the way closed. So if somebody says, my rebound's at three clicks, they mean three clicks out, or three turns out. Now all these topics are covered in greater depth at DaveMossTuning.com. Be sure to check out the website and learn how to set up your suspension properly. You can do it.